I think this is the biggest technological shift since the cloud and will likely be much bigger. I think in a decade from now, we're gonna have significant transformations in how people work. So excited about the potential uh, for improved productivity to change the way each and every one of us work. But at the same time, we need to make sure that's done in a responsible and, and efficient fashion. This is a seismic shift in terms of the technology. People have been using AI in some shape or form, but in the last 18 to 24 months, what has really happened is the, the advances in generative AI have made things available now to people who didn't necessarily have access to those kinds of abilities. Also in the last uh, you know, couple of years with the advent of large language models, the amount of data that can be processed and analyzed effectively by AI and made available to common people. And I'm using the common people in, in quotes here where you know, everybody is now having access to it has really made a huge difference. Lots of fact in terms of how AI is helping us. That is also some fiction. Everybody's jumping on the train and trying to do things, but it's a lot more fact than fiction. There are certain guardrails that we should be very careful about. First and foremost, everybody's using AI, but not everything we get from AI is necessarily accurate. Mm -hmm. The other piece that I think we should really be careful about are the societal biases that get into AI. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, these large language models are looking at data that's available across the internet. And unfortunately, that data has biases built into it. Yeah. Uh, and last but not the least, by which by itself can be a huge topic, is the whole thing around data privacy, data security, mm -hmm. and so on, which I'm sure we'll talk about. But these are the things for me are, I wouldn't necessarily call them as concerns, but things that as we look at advancements in AI, we should be very careful about in terms of the guardrails that we put around and how, how do we work towards that? Yeah. Simpler uses a lot of AI internally. And we, we are part of the Responsible AI Institute, for example. And we really pay a lot of attention to that. You want to go with those kinds of vendors who are not just prioritizing AI, they are prioritizing responsible ethical AI. Whenever you start with a vendor, you're starting hopefully a, you know, a multi-year journey where you both can you know, make each other successful, um, right? A specifically technology vendor. So I think that um, asking about, hey, how do you think about complying with the, the latest regulations out of the EU? You must have, you know, you're a global company, you might have customers in the EU. How are you thinking about privacy regulations in the context of AI? How are you securing this and making sure that ha they have a standards-based approach versus what they, you know, and their team have thought up is particularly important. When I think about AI, I think I completely agree with Akshay. You don't want to start big and try to, you know, boil the ocean and, and solve, solve world hunger immediately, right? Start small. Uh, and these are perfect use cases. Workflow automation, which is basically take repetitive tasks and see how they can be automated. That would be one of the first use cases. If I was building AI, that would be one of the first use cases I would look at. Second piece would be finding the right information. Searching for information and getting the right information to do your job is a huge problem. You know, that's where all these enterprise search companies are going, right? We, we use Google day in, day out. Now think about using a version of Google for your internal, you know, enterprise related activities. Big, big difference. I think that's where virtual assistant can really help with getting the right information, doing repetitive tasks. And then the third piece, and you know, I'm, there are lots of use cases, but I'm just thinking about more of the things that can be of immediately useful is this collaboration tools that Akshay talked about, co-pilots. Mm. Every company is coming out with co-pilots. Efficient use of a co-pilot can drastically increase the productivity of a person. And I'm with you. I think it's going to be those small wins that are going to kind of build the momentum to, to onto bigger things. I really do believe that it's important to understand by department or use case and start from a bottoms up level. So literally take your key functions or key sections of your product and map out areas where generative AI or demos you've seen and start looking at actual products and then actually engaging your employees, et cetera, and making them part of the process. I find that more and more once people see what advancements in workflow automation, search can do, individual employees are speaking up and starting to innovate themselves. 
and ask and request for new products. Most people don't want to do their efficient their, their work inefficiently. I think the challenge today is it's almost the fear of missing out, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody thinks they should use AI. You know, AI will solve every problem. It is the silver bullet. Not true, right? As in, there are lots of things that you have to do to make it really work for you. If I was calling out two, three key things, right? One would be if for a CIO or a CTO, start with very clear business objectives. Don't start with, I want to implement AI. Overlooking the data readiness piece of it, because it's easy to say, I'll do this, but if your data is not ready, and there's a lot of hard work that needs to go into getting data ready to truly help you, right? As in, especially in the enterprise world. So I think we tend to underestimate even after you have built the right AI solution, how important it is to have the right skills and resources to get the best out of it. Two words, every CTO, CEO, board needs to be thinking about is upskilling and reskilling of people. Mm-hmm. But upskilling and reskilling of your people to make sure they're taking advantage of these trends so it's a force multiplier for your business is the key thing. Mm-hmm. And the quicker folks can take advantage of that and understand how it fits into their work and how they can leverage this, their underlying productivity is going to be impacted. And then the opposite is true. If you're not taking care of this opportunity and empowering your existing employee and workforce to take advantage of this, you're falling behind. Experiment, align, implement. Most folks are doing it backwards. They have a solution in mind, they want to implement, then they align with their employees, and then they figure out what's wrong with the who solutions, et cetera. Of it. It's actually, we should be doing the opposite. We should be testing what sort of work and having every worker understand the potential. The way I look at AI, Miriam, is it's not a destination, right? It's, it's a journey that we are going to be on. We will have to really set up strong foundational steps, you know, take strong foundational steps, take a measured approach, and then learn continuously. We're going to make mistakes. All of us are going to make mistakes, but learn from those uh, mistakes. That's the way to harness the true AI potential.